श्री विद्या शिववाम भाग निलया ऋकार मंत्रोज्वला श्री चक्रांकित बिंदु मध्य वसती श्रीमत्सभायिका श्रीमत्सन्मुख विघ्नराजननी श्रीमज्जगन्मोहिनी मीनाक्षी प्रणतस्म सततम कारुण्यवारा निधि सिंधूरारुण विग्रहानयना मणिक्यमस्फुर तारा नायक शेखरा स्मित मुखी मापी न वक्षोरुहा पाणीभ्यामिपूर्णरत्नचक रक्तोत्पल बिभ्रती सौम्यात्नघस्तरक्तरण ध्यापरांबिका First of all, I offer my obeisance to the divine in you, with whose divine grace you all are here today. So one thing that was clear to me was that Mother Divine is not bound to any ritual, to any method. she is not uh, she is not a uh, lower form of energy she is not a uh, a pishachini that we can just chant with mantra and bind her and bring her in front of us she is mother divine unmesh namesh utpanna vipanna bhuvnavali anek koti brahmand janani divya vigraha she has the most divine form one can imagine there was a man once he went to a shop and he was buying some stuff and a lady comes to that shop and she buys a whole heap of stuff and says to the man to the shopkeeper thank you and walks away this man said oh you didn't give her the bill she didn't pay you anything where is the account he said oh there is no account because we are in love with each other and when you're in love you don't charge you don't maintain an account you just do it so with mother divine no account is possible i can't say i'll call you 2.5 crore times and that's a lot of time therefore come it's just not possible somewhere we re- we have to realize where we belong in the creation we may be part of we are part of the divine and therefore we are complete but only qualitatively quantitatively we are one tiny drop in even this place earth is a tiny drop in our galaxy our galaxy is a tiny drop in the universe the universe is a tiny drop in the multiverse the scale of creation is extraordinarily infinite to experience the divine somewhere we have to be divine so even though i'm sitting here today expounding on lalita sasranam the essence of it at least not the actual exposition on the sasranam the basis of my faith is direct experience now you can't you don't have to take my word for it you just have to do what i did to get what i got if that's what you're after 
And I do beg for forgiveness of Mother Divine for uh, this audacity to say that I'm going to expound on the essence of Lalita Sasranam because I'm unfit for that. Hari Ananta, Hari Katha Ananta. Kabhi na ho, nahi chatur kaham. Mati anurup ram gunagam. Maharagupati ke charita para. Kamati mori nirata sansara. I'm not that intelligent to expound on Lalita Sasranam because she is infinite. She is beyond my grasp. And on the one hand is the purest, the, the, the finest part of Lalita Sasranam that I absolutely love that explains Ma, her attributes. Nirlepa, nirmala, nitta, nirakara, nirakula, nirguna, nishkala, shanta, nishkama, nirupa, pallava, nitya mukta, nirvikara, nishprapancha, nirashara, nitya shuddha, nitya buddha, nirvadya, nirantara. Nishkarana, nishkalanka, nirupa, adhin, nirishvara, niraga, ragamati, nirmadamada, nashani, nishchinta, nirankara, nirmoha, moho, nashani, nirmama, mamta, hantir, nishpapa, papa, nashani, nishkroda, krodha, shamani, nirlobha, lobha, nashani, nishansya, sanshagni, nirbhava, nashani, nirvikalpa, nirabada, nirveda, bheda, nashani. Nirnasha mrittu matni nishkriya nishparigra. Nistula nil chikura nirpaya niratya. She is nirlep. Nirmal, there is no residue. She is unattached. She is the foremost essence. She is beyond intellect. She is krodh, but she is also the destruction, the destroyer of, of krodh. She is all the bhavas, all the emotions and also the creator of those emotions and the destroyer of those emotions. So who, at least not me, it's not me who can, who can sing her glories. But for the purposes of sharing my experience more than anything else, I'm here today and I hope to, to talk about Ma. It's a, it's a subject I can talk day and night on. To me, God is not an entity as such who's sitting there up in the sky somewhere and putting you through hard tests in life. I don't see God that way, no. To me, God is an expression of my gratitude. The thank you, some force who's giving me the opportunity to breathe, to, to speak, to taste, to touch, to be here. The, the heat in the, in the fire, the light in the sunlight, the cold in ice, the beauty of the flowing water, the force in air, that she is Mother Divine for me. She is eminent in absolutely everything I can possibly imagine and beyond. So when I worship Ma, I do worship a form because it helps me fall in love with her. It helps me stay devoted to her. It helps me call out for her. But I also do meditation on formless, which is, I won't say kundalini or chakras or anything, but just staying in the meditative state because it helps me connect with her. Once upon a time, there was a baby camel and he asked his mother, he said, Mother, why do we have hump on our backs? She said, oh, these humps are massive stores of fat. When we have to remain hungry for many, many days because we are animals of the uh, desert, these humps supply us the food. So, oh, and why do we have long legs and round hooves? hooves? She said, oh, because we are animals of the sand. It helps us navigate properly. He said, but why three eyelashes? All the other animals have one eyelash and we have three. Why three eyelashes? She said, that's because of the sand. When it blows, we can close in levels based on the visibility we require and to protect ourselves. And the baby camel said, well, we are designed for sand, 
we are protected to be in a sandy environment. What are we doing in a zoo then? <laughs> what are we doing here in a zoo? So, we all have been blessed with man, buddhi, chit, ahankar, body, senses, cognitive and cognitive, ability to act, ability to think. Yet, rather than being in a natural environment, we are in this world trying to pursue all unnatural things, trying to go after all unnatural attainments. This is an unnatural path. It can never, ever lead you to your natural state. This is in a nutshell. Everything human being has created is unnatural. Think about it, just see it around. Everything we have created from buildings to cars to even this infrastructure, everything is unnatural. I'm not saying it's useless. I'm just saying in your pursuit of experiencing your transcendental nature, your purest energy, your primordial force, who you may call Cosmic Mother, the Divine Mother, or Raj Rajeshwari, or Lalitambika, or Adya Shakti, or even Narayana, or Shiva, any name you want to give, you will have to come to a natural state of mind. That alone will help you see the truth as it is. That alone will help you see the truth as it is, not how it should be. So bliss and joy, they are your natural states of mind. An example I give very frequently, if you go into a room that is dark, and in your hands, in your palms, you hide a little lamp and you walk into the room and you open your palms, light spreads in the entire room. The whole room is lit. But if you walk into a room that is already lit with a little bit of darkness in your palms and go in and open it, the darkness will go away. You can make the room dark. So all the afflictions, the mental afflictions that are holding anybody down, it's not natural. That's because we are holding on to them. If you let it go, you will return to your natural state. And then you will only experience bliss. And then you will be ready to receive divine grace.